the first thing we're going to have a look at is how a standing wave is produced. And what we're going to do is just use this, um, this uh, Java applet to um, demonstrate how that happens. So in order to, to form a standing wave, all we need is two waves of equal frequency and amplitude traveling in opposite directions and superposing and interfering. And what, what, uh, we'll just observe that happening. So here we have the red wave traveling to the right, the white wave traveling to the left, and the superposition of those results in interference which produces the yellow wave on the string. So the only, the only wave we'd actually be able to see on the string in this case is the yellow wave. And what we can see is it produces what's called a standing wave, which has, which doesn't transfer any energy to the left or to the right, um, and it has a very large amplitude at some points and no amplitude at others, and those positions where the amplitude is large and where the amplitude is zero, they don't move. So the wave uh, appears to be standing or stationary. Um, so that's how we produce a standing wave, and we're going to um, spend a little bit of time now um, describing the properties of these waves and, and making more sense of, of how we can create them in, in reality. Okay, so now let's just observe as we talk through the, the key properties of a standing wave. Um, so I'll, I'll get the standing, I'll establish the standing wave in this um, string again. So here we see the two waves overlap again, um, and the interference of the two waves produce this larger amplitude standing wave, which is the yellow wave that we see here. So standing waves, firstly, do not transfer energy. Um, so the energy doesn't move to the left or to the right in the yellow wave, which is the sum of the two other waves. We can kind of understand that because we have a um, two waves of equal amplitude and frequency traveling in opposite directions. So technically, there should be no net transfer of energy to the left or to the right. And so um, what does result is this standing wave, um, which, uh, although it stores some energy, doesn't transfer any energy to the, um, uh, to the left or to the right in this situation. The other aspect of a standing wave that we'll note is even though the parts, the different particles along this wave, I'll just stop it and have a look. Even though the particles of this wave um, oscillate with different amplitude, they all oscillate with the same frequency. So I'll just get it going again. So if we look at this, this particle here, that oscillates with the same frequency as any other particle here. So although the amplitude here is much larger, it still oscillates the same number of times per second. So the frequency of all particles along the wave are the, is the same. Um, what is different, however, is that particles along the wave oscillate with different amplitudes. So here, for example, we have a particle with a very large amplitude, whereas here we have a particle oscillating with a much smaller amplitude. So different points along the wave uh, oscillate up and down with different amplitudes. Um, the so position where the amplitude is maximum, we have one here in the middle, and we have one on each end of this particular wave. Um, those points are called antinodes. The position positions along the standing wave where there is no amplitude, so where the particles don't vibrate at all, um, those positions are called nodes. So here we have a node and there we have another node. Um, the last thing to mention is that um, it's, it's kind of very easy to pick out the nodes of a, of a um, standing wave. So let me just pause this. So here we can see two nodes of the standing wave. You should note, however, that the um, wavelength is actually twice the distance between two consecutive nodes or twice the distance between two consecutive antinodes. 